Abdel Dean, who do we got with us today, brother? This lady is a five-time Grammy Award nominee. She has sung all over the world, and she is right here up the street from us. Uh-huh. Now, she's not from San Diego, but she's residing in San Diego now, uh-huh. and her name is Shamika Copeland. Good morning, my sister. Good morning. So What's nice happening, here. Mika? Can I call you Mika? <laughs> You sure can. Everybody else does. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So Oceanside, California, yes. how did you get part of the Chosen City? You know, my husband, I was in Chicago for 15 years, yeah. and my husband ended up getting a job out here. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I couldn't say no since, you know, I, I've been a touring musician all my life. Yes. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to tour uh because of COVID nineteen. Right. So I was like, all right, you know, um let's let's go to California. And it's been a beautiful thing. I love I love having so much sun and I really love not having uh all the snow. I tell you that much. I well, miss my I miss my I miss Chicago, but I don't miss the snow and the well, cold weather. Because it's well, cold let, there. Let, it let, cold. let me explain to you uh uh <laughs> the word from the Lord. The Lord says that if you're born in the United States you are blessed. Yes. And if you yes. happen to be to reside in California, you're doubly blessed. Right. But oh, yeah. if you buy San Diego, California, you're part of the chosen few. Yeah. So welcome to the yeah. chosen few area. You can always go back and see in California. You can always go back and visit. Yeah. You can always, if you yeah. miss Chicago pizza, it's just a phone call away, and they will send you that Chicago pizza. But I tell you, the only thing that you can't get in California is that Chicago church during the winter time. Yeah, and we don't want it. Yeah, and we don't want it. So tell us about who you are and all your life a tour musician and still looking like you thirteen because black don't crack. Come on through church. I'm looking at that smooth skin too. <laughs> well, I sure, I sure do appreciate you saying that because I, you know, I'm almost forty two years old and I got a four year old and I'm tired all the time. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm a second generation blues artist. My father was a great blues musician, Grammy Award winning artist. His name was Johnny Copeland. And um, I just, uh, you know, followed in his footsteps. I always say I got a calling. I tried not to perform. I mean, I tried desperately not to become an artist, a singer. Right. <laughs> but that's not what God's plan was for me. God said, uh, no, this is what you're supposed to do. So that's what I do. <laughs> so so let and me ask you this question. Well let me ask you this question. This is a rumor. You can help me out with this oh, rumor. Here we go at rumors. Uh, uh, this, 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 this is a rumor. I heard that one night you was on stage and you was given one of your best performances and your husband was in the audience and he leaned over to his partner and said, uh, that's going to be my wife. Is that is that how it all happened? Tell t- tell me how it all happened. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that, but it sounds like it could be true. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> Shamika, sister, you have done so much, and I, I started looking and researching the stuff you've done. You have been around the world and have played in some major places. Let's talk about your career in blues. Because that's a powerful music, the lyrics. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, uh, I've always said that, you know, blues, um, gospel, soul, it's it's all the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even <Right>. country. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, we're all, we're all cousins. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm so grateful that what I do has taken me all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do miss it right now, not being able to travel and get in front of people and perform um what i was scared of at the very beginning is now my favorite thing um performing for the people i I miss it so much uh and yeah i've done some some pretty cool things i'm really blessed i was so back in the days when they had music in the white house yeah (laughs) right i was able before the trumpians for the old (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) Before all the music and everything went out of the, the White House, right. I bet I, I, I'm hoping Biden brings it back because we had so much fun during the Obama days at the White House yes. because there was music all the time. Yes. And he had a blues night there and I got a chance to perform at the White House for that. It was wow. so freaking cool. <laughs> wow. What an honor. <laughs> yeah. And so I really enjoy stuff like that. So I'm really hoping that, you know, when COVID is over, 
uh, the Bidens will bring music back. We can get back in there and do some more shows and performances. Right, because music heals. Music is universal language, and, and we can disagree on everything, but music seems to bring people together. Now, yes. Now, 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 Mika, let me ask you a question. When, when you mm -hmm. went to the White House, um, what, what, what one souvenir did you take that you cherished the most from being at the White House? I know. I was trying to get some stuff, but the, <laughs> Michelle Obama, who's incredible, yes. she hosted a, a luncheon because a few of us, myself, Kebmo, Trumbo, and Shorty, we did a um, sort of like a, a, a workshop for mm -hmm. some children that she had brought in throughout the country. And so there, there was a luncheon. So I got me a whole lot of napkins, White uh -huh. House napkins from wow. that luncheon. Wow. Well, well, well. <laughs> So, so, so you, you actually, um, how many times did you go to the White House? I went to the White House one time, just okay. once, but I spent about three days there. So I felt like it was <laughs> more. Right. And you know what else I heard, Shamika? I heard you're really good friends to one of the people I love so much, Mavis Staples. Is that true? Absolutely. I love and adore her. Me too. Um, worked with her quite a bit and uh you know i want to be just like her when i grow up because um you know her and her father pop staples yes. you know they they started protest songs and that's kind of that's kind of what i do singing about issues and things that's going on in the world right. and uh and i just do it um for more current issues but yeah i i love her i love her and she's just a doll i've got the cutest picture of her with my baby. She was one of the first people I told I was pregnant. She was so, so happy. <laughs> wow. So let me ask you this question. With the pandemic and the social unrest, how many songs have you pent since since that, uh, since that it all started? Oh, my gosh. So many. Uh, because the divisiveness was just killing me. I mean, for my, for, for I did, I've done a lot of social records, but, um, but, this one here to me, um, my previous record, you know, I, I dove into racism um, and I did a song called Would You Take My Blood? Because, you know, it, 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 it just makes no sense to me why we hate each other when we're all the same. Come on. And I did another song on that previous record called Ain't Got Time For Hate. And so that record kind of led me to this record, mm -hmm. the new record, which is called Uncivil War. Mm -hmm. And that song is about the divisiveness that's going on in the in the world. Yes. I also did a, I also did a song called Clotilda's on Fire. Clotilda was the, the slave ship that they found off the coast of mm -hmm. Alabama about three years ago. So years and years after they abolished slavery, they were still illegally bringing slaves over, and to hide what they were doing, they burned the ship, and they <clears throat> found that ship off the coast of Alabama about three years ago. And I really, really wanted to, uh, I really wanted to do that song because here in America, uh, they just want to act like slavery never happened. Right. And just sweep it under the rug. Right. And let's just pretend it never happened. Right. But um, it keeps rearing its ugly head. Yes, ma'am. Because it's, because it's not ended. You know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. Um, we've ne it's never been dealt with. That's and because right. it's never been dealt with, that's why we're still going through the same things we're going through yes, right now. Black Lives Matter and everything. Right. So mm -hmm. to me, my favorite line of that song is, you know, um, Clotilde, uh, we're still living with her ghost. And that is just the case. We are. And that's a shame. And it's shameful in America that we have to d deal with that. I also did another song called I'm Going to Walk Until I Ride. Mm -hmm. And culturally, that's what we've always had to do. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and so, you know, there, there's just a there's a lot on this record. I'm really, really proud of it. Hey, I, I got an idea for, for a song to write. Uh, uh, orange is, is a color, but not of your skin. <laughs> oh, God. Here he, here and, he and, goes, Shabika. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. And, and you can put a little caveat that say 45. <laughs> See, oh, she, she, she like that. She's like, she, yeah. She I got know. It. Her mind is going, she's so creative. You, you remind me of Nina Simone with, 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 oh. with, with, with the consciousness and, yes. and, and, and your, Thank you so much. And your That's stance, an honor. And your stance on injustice, how you put your foot down and you don't play. And, and with this new Billy, Billy Holiday movie coming out, 
it's it's going to really really show our 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 um artists African American artists in a different light, you know, because it's Absolutely. her against the USA, and I I think that's great in putting all them yeah. together. I love that. I mean, I love when Queen Latifah did the Bessie Smith uh, movie. Yes. You know, I love them, you know, doing um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, the mm -hmm. August Wilson play. Mm -hmm. I love that Den Denzel is doing those because, you know, what it does is, is that it you know introduces an entirely new generation mm -hmm. to these women who mm -hmm. paved the way. Uh, for all of us, yes, I mean, in the twenties, female blues artists—they they were just it. Come they on. were the ones, Come you know. On. Um, and that's what it was all about. They were the entertainers, and these women were, you know, they were amazing. They, you know, Ma had her own train. Bessie did also. They had a whole lot of money in a time where black people really didn't. Right. At least not a whole lot. They right. were pretty pretty amazing ladies in that respect so but i gotta tell you guys a funny nina simone story i was doing a gig in portland oregon at a festival and uh she was uh they she was performing later on that night at mm -hmm. a theater and the promoter knew i loved nina simone so much and he said shamika i have to work and i can't think of anybody better to give these tickets to and I was like so happy. Oh my I had God. got finished working and I was just excited to go to this concert. And I had taken this guy that I was seeing to the Nina Simone concert with me. And I was at the concert. I was having such a good time. This guy I was seeing fell asleep. At the end of that concert, I left him in front of the theater. And I said, anyone who falls asleep on Nina Simone, I can't be with, and I walked <gasps> off, and I, left him there, and I never spoke to him again. Oh my God! I never spoke to him again. He said, "You got to kick rocks. We ain't gonna do this." Now, here's the thing, and I for real though, yeah, I don't know if you know, but her brother uh, resided in in San Diego until he passed away. Doctor no, Doctor no, Carroll, yes, very good. He he was amazing, uh, a person to know. Uh, right here in San Diego, uh, amazing uh, uh, person uh, to have, and so we got to see a lot of Nina Simone's stuff because he was the uh, the um, over her estate benefactor in the, over her estate. Oh, wow. okay. Yes, okay. yes. I'm I'm learning that there's a whole lot of great um, artists that lived uh, in San Diego County, and why not? Of course, you know it's beautiful. <laughs> well, 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 you know this. We are we are the chosen, and and we we glad that you came to right. the chosen area. So let me ask you this well, question: When you, I when, feel like God chose me to come here. You yes. know, it's like it's time for you to leave. Time for you to get out. So, yeah. <laughs> right. So let me ask you this question: ha Have you been inspired? Uh, uh, to write as you walked along the beach shore? You know, I haven't uh, that much just because when I'm out there, I'm with my little boy. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have just been watching how much joy he has. Uh, and I really spend most of my time focusing on him and his, his childhood, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like, um, some songs are going to come out of that yes. because mm -hmm. I I do. I just love watching the joy he gets playing in the water mm -hmm. and playing in the sand and just getting dirty. And, <laughs> you know, it's right. like, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, n not yet, not yet. Well, I see. And, and, I'm, and, and when it happens, you're going to remember I said this, I see you performing at the amphitheater right there on the waterfront. Uh, in Oceanside, oh, it's beautiful. To a packed place to the point that they're standing on the pier, looking to see you uh, right there on the waterfront, and you killing it. I, 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 I we got to get place, huh? All the time, yeah. I, I walk past that place all the time, wow. and I cannot wait to perform there. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> get in touch with the city of uh, Oceanside every day and say, look, you got a Grammy Award winning right here. Y'all better, <laughs> you got better put it on. Right, because you've done events. <laughs> you, you put on events there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause I'm pretty sure yes. soon, you know, when things open up a little more, mm -hmm. that, that'll be the case. Yeah. Yes, because you, I'm telling you, it is so interesting talking to you because when you think about the blues, jazz, and gospel, Thomas A. Dorsey, who coined gospel, was a blues and jazz musician first. So there is mm -hmm. such a strong bond, like you said, cousins 
of those genre of musics. So, and, mm-hmm. and it's, it's the stories of the African-American mm-hmm. experience. That's exactly. what it's all about. Exactly. And, you know, I've been working with the museum in Nashville that just opened up and they're doing the history of African-American music. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Uh, it's, we are all, it, we are all connected. Yes, and ma'am. Literally tells our story, our story. as people, our story, <laughs> and it, and all the music does. Yeah, you know. So, so. So let me ask you this question: Out of your full dossier of songs, if you were to pick three songs that are what you consider to be your go-to favorite, no matter what, you're gonna put them on your set. What would those three songs be? Oh God, I have like 12 albums you're killing me with this question but um (laughs) (laughs) but i would definitely say ghetto child um that's one of the first songs i ever did about social injustice my father wrote that song um gosh back in the 1950s about kids growing up in third ward texas i'm just a ghetto child living um a ghetto child living in his so-called free land uh i've been singing that song for 30 years (laughs) And uh, I would definitely put that one in the set. And then here lately, I would definitely say Walk Until I Ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, the song I was telling you about, um, about culturally what we have always had to do to survive. And then, gosh, I don't know what else. Um, I'm such a performer in a sense that, you know, I would I would always want to pick songs that, you know, I like a, a show that's a bit of a roller coaster right. to take people through a different, uh, th- through different emotions. Yes. Um, I remember going to see Etta James one time and I was laughing, I was crying, <laughs> I had goose pimples. It was like, I went through so much. Right. So I always wanted to put on a show like that. So I don't know, maybe on Civil War right now because of what's going on. Now, did you ever get a chance to to hear or perform in the same um, venue with Aretha Franklin? I never did. Nope, I never did get to perform with her. Uh, but she knew about me uh, because I had gotten a message some years ago that s- said that she was proud of, of what I was doing. She was asked asked about me. Did she know of, of me? Wow. And she was like, oh, yeah, so... That's cool. That's about the closest I've ever gotten. <laughs> what an so, honor, though. So Man. let me ask you this question. You you grew up as a child of a of a star, a mm-hmm. legend. Mm-hmm. How did that shape you, um, and how are you using your experience to impact your child? Wow. You know what? When I think to both my parents, they just were incredible people. Um and they raised me well. And wow. I would not have been able to get through all these years in this business if that wasn't the case. So uh, I've been so fortunate mm-hmm. in that respect. So when I think about my childhood, I think about just my father, even though he was on tour, um, he was very consistent. Mm-hmm. You know, I spoke to him a lot. He took us to Spain and he and we were able to uh, experience traveling and doing things because of him. My mom was always solid because she held it down when he wasn't around, yes, you know, yes. and she, she was, you know, she was just a, a total uh, bad behind woman. I love right. her. Um, and uh, she was I'm, I'm sending out some prayers for my mom. She's having a procedure this morning. My brother is with her, uh, but she's just, a, you know, incredible. So I was raised really well. Mm-hmm. And I think that for me, it's just all about solid foundation yes. to help you to get through this, to get through Um, so that you can have a good life. Yes. Uh, Because it's, you know, it's tough times. So you got to pray. Yes. Me and my baby pray all the time. Uh, He knows the importance of that already. Yes. Uh, And so, you know, and just trying to be positive. So, and trying not to spoil them too much. Because, you know, when you have your only child and you in your (laughs) 40s and that's your only baby, forget about it. Right, right. (laughs) Yeah. Now, I understand because I only have one child, but, you know, I got a repeat. I, I have a grandchild now. Oh, and, and, forget And that forget. grandchild, boy, I tell you, I just call her when, when I just call her just to say, I need some energy, you know, because she yeah. just got so much of it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 
Um, is it safe, and I'm going to ask this question since we're a Christian station, <laughs> is it safe to play walk until I ride on the station? Oh, oh, absolutely. Okay, good, good. Yes, yes. You know, I have to ask that because, you know, when you think of the blues, you know, there's some, sometimes you get real bluesy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so I said, let, let, let me ask definitely this. Suggest, there's some I would definitely suggest you not play, but Walk Until I Ride is a perfect one to play. Right. Okay. Now, cool. my, my last question for you, because I'm just so honored to have you on here. We, we, we met through a mutual friend, and I thank God. I knew God set it up. Yeah. <laughs> How was it when you got your first Grammy? No, I've I've not gotten. Oh, one you've been yet. nominated. I'm still holding on to it. I've been nominated several times. How did that I've feel? I've not though? gotten one yet. How did but it feel? But I'm praying on it. I'm praying on it. Y'all can pray on it with me that it happens. <laughs> well, well, let's let's ask. A Are you up for it? Are this you nominated year? this year? No, my album didn't come out in time. So oh. hopefully, hopefully next year. Uh, I'll uh, it'll it'll be considered for a nomination. But she's okay. nominated for uh, some awards now. Okay, okay, well, wait, a minute. hold, hold, hold oh, on. Oh yeah, but I'm nominated for five blues music awards. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this yeah. year. Now where's yeah, that? But, at? But, but hold on, let me ask this question. So Mika, we got to get a game plan for next year because see, we're voting members. You know what I'm saying? Oh, all right. Yeah, now. so we, we got to get a game plan for the Grammys next I year. Told so you, Mika, we ain't playing. Hit, hit, hit us back up so that we can go ahead and get that Grammy. And you know, and, and then we come up to Oceanside and take pictures with you. <laughs> oh, we go no, we look at we're not gonna just come and take no pictures. We're gonna have a whole party. There right. You go. <laughs> right, right. So, so I'm gonna have a big old party. I like to cook too, so y'all be stuffed eat. hanging out. And we me. like to yeah. we like to eat too. Praise sis. the Lord, praise the Lord. So so you're nominated for what awards? <laughs> the 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 um blues awards? The blues music awards, yes. Have you won those before? Yeah, I have, I have, yes, lots of those. <laughs> wow, so that's that's like the Blues Grammys. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I like to say I, I love talking to legends. I love talking to people that have been in the family she business. Has substance. And um, you are so humble yes. and, and so kicked back. You got to come on, visit us in San Diego. We'll show you this country city hospitality. Anytime, anytime. I'm looking forward to it. Let's do it. Amen. And, 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 and we're COVID around here in, in this studio. No, no, we're not COVID. We, we COVID, COVID conscious. conscious. Yes. Okay. You get your, you get your temperature checked and every, sanitizer. You got every gadget in here, sis. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Watch, watch, watch this. Watch it's this, it's Jamaica. Got, got to pull out the, the, the wand. The wand. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 got, we got everything yes, in the yes, book. Yes, we do. We're trying to stay COVID-free. Yes. Robert just had his test done yesterday. I got my results this morning. Hallelujah. And, and, and he's still COVID-free. Oh, Praise yes. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, right on. But, yes, yes we, we appreciate you. Um, we, we love you taking out this time. We wanted to pull up a song that represents where you're at now and some of your heart. Because you introduced Walk Until I Ride, and we're going to well, play for the people. Let me thank Brenda Davis, our personal friend. Who told me about yes. her? She bragged about her. Yeah. Brenda is in Oceanside and she's a hairstylist extraordinaire and has been for years. And she was bragging yeah. about Shamika to me. Hi, Brenda. <laughs> yeah, so hey, Brenda, Brenda, thank you. Yes. <laughs> so if you could just introduce your song and we're going to play it for the people. All right. This is Walk Until I Ride. On right here G -O -D on GODRadio1.com. 